be important. But by the way, where is this one pointing? Oh. It's not up. You can kind of show me. Yeah, kind of like this, like at a 45 degree angle. Does it? So where does this vector end? What quadrant does it end in? The first quadrant. Because 3, 3 is its end point. So that's in quadrant 1. And you may think, so why do I care? Well, because later on it's going to become important. When we need to find um, the direction of the vector, it's going to be important to know is it in quadrant 1, 2, 3, or 4, because then we'll need to know where the angle is related to angles. So here is why we waited until now. We can also write vectors in terms of their magnitude and direction. So basically, we can replace A here with the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle. that the vector makes with the positive x-axis. Now, remember, our x-coordinate on the unit circle was our cosine value. That's, why, that's where that comes from. We can replace b with the magnitude of b times the sine of the angle that the vector makes with the positive x-axis. Now, this one we don't use quite as much because it's really annoying. But we do use it sometimes. So, V cosine of magnitude of V times the cosine of theta, I plus the magnitude of V times the sine of theta, J. Now, why do we want to deal with this? Well, because sometimes we're given information like the following. Find the magnitude and the direction of the vector, u. Well, the magnitude's easy, yes? How do I find the magnitude of this vector? So I have the vector, yeah? Square root. So let's see, I have a i minus j. So the magnitude of u is going to be the square root of a squared. A squared. nicer quadrants faster, more often. Yes, did you notice this while you were solving your inverse trig functions? Which one? It was the cosine one. Remember when you took your inverse cosine, you could end up in quadrant one or in quadrant two in a nice positive direction. None of this negative directional stuff because we think of the direction of a vector as being a positive number or a positive angle measure. We don't usually think of them as being negative angle measures. So we think of them as the smallest positive angle measure between 0 and 2 pi, or between 0 and 360. So one time around the circle. So that means it's going to be a whole lot nicer using the cosine version than the sine version, because there's a lot more work with the sine version. Some of you got that as so let's do this version. We have that h is equal to the square root of 65 times the cosine of theta. Yes. Yes. No. We're okay with that? I'm supposed to be solving what? From right here. That number is equal to the equivalent of this. 
And so I already calculated this part. I'm using put in the cosine of theta, so now I just need to find theta. Well, what do I do to start? Come on, that puts easy. Divide by the square root of 65. So 8 over the square root of 65 equals the cosine of theta. Now, the next part may not be so easy, but we'll see how it goes. What do I do next? Take the inverse cosine. So I have the arc cosine of 8 over the square root of 65 is equal to theta. Now, I'm pretty sure you get to do these in degrees in most of the homework problems. So degrees will be the place to be here. So let's do the arc cosine of 8 divided by the square root of 65, and that comes out to be, 9 degrees, that comes out to be 7.125163493 degrees. Is that really the direction of this vector? But let's draw a picture of where this vector is pointing. There's my x and y axis. What are the what's the end point of this vector? 8, comma, negative 1. 2, 4, 6, 8. Negative 1. Negative 1. Right here. Is that 7 degrees? No, it's not. So what is the seven degrees information that we just got? It's how much this little angle is? Okay, but I don't want that one, right? Do I? Because I need my angle to be between zero. I need to say, what I need is to find depth angle. Because my angle always starts at the positive x-axis and goes in the positive angle measuring direction. So I agree with Brenda, it's this piece right here. 360. So the actual direction is going to be 360 minus the 7.125163349, which turns out to be this angle then, the one I was looking for, is the 352. 0.874-9837. Now I have some good news for you. And by the way, if you decided to use this one with the negative J, the negative one, you could end up in the same place, but it would take a little bit more work to get there. If your vector is in quadrant one or quadrant two, this process will produce a theta that is also the direction of the vector. Every time. Because when we do inverse cosines, they come out in 1 and 2. So if your vector was pointing into well, quadrant 1 or quadrant 2, we're set. For quadrant 3 or 4, it turns out we get to do exactly the same thing. What did I do here? Well, I did 360 minus the angle. That's going to work in quadrant 4. So if you're in quadrant 3 or 4, you always do 360 minus the arc cosine of the, of the um, theta that you got. Or, excuse me, the arc cosine of this thing. So minus your theta to get your direction. So there's that one extra step. The plus with using the cosine version, this one, is that it's always the same extra step. It's a different extra step if you're in the sine version. Same extra step, especially the slate in the semester is very nice. <laughs>